we come into your presence right now, Lord Jesus. Asking you, Father, to have your way, Lord. Let your perfect will be done in the service on tonight, Lord. None of us for all of you, Lord Jesus. As I decrease, Lord Jesus, you increase the more, Lord. Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to dress me in your anointing on tonight, Lord. Lord, hide me behind the cross right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I bind up every spirit of death. that he want us to be. Tonight I want to talk about the restoration of the whole body of Christ. Hallelujah. Not just you because don't you know that God is bigger than you? Uh, it's not just about you. I'm going to say that and I'm going to keep saying it. I'm speaking to the nations. I'm speaking to the world. I'm speaking to everyone that's going to hear my voice on tonight. Spiritual restoration is because the God that we serve is an awesome God. And there's no God like Him. Hallelujah. 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 Bear with me. You all can be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my Lord. Just want to give you an outline. Whenever you're ready to worship God, and whenever your spirit is in tune with God, you can't let anything get in your way. Sometimes you just got to block the people out. They might think you're too loud, but so what? Continue to get your release. Continue to give God what you owe him. Because you owe him a worship and you owe him a praise. Never mind who's looking. 
looking at you, but continue to pour out into God. The more you pour out into God, the more he's going to pour out in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was reading this scripture. Reading the whole chapter 11 in St. John's. I stumble upon something. In the story about Lazarus. I was able to get the church out of Lazarus. The state of the church in America, the state of the church in the world. So I'm not just talking about you, but I'm talking about the body of Christ yes. as a whole. Uh -huh. Where are we at in this time of day? Come on, come on. It reads in verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore her sister sent unto him and saying, Lord, behold, he who thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. Yes. The body of Christ has been sick for a long time. Yes. And God has come to give the body of Christ a cure. Yes. And the cure is his son, Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. For too long we've been acting church and playing church. My God. And the body of Christ has been ill because the body of Christ has lost its power. Come on. There's no power in the churches today. My wife said something to me that was so profound. She said that the church have lost its power and the church in the world is dead today. They have already eulogized the church My God. because our voice is silent. Yes. But how many of you know that we serve an awesome God? He is a resurrecting God. He is a mighty God. He is so wonderful that he said that I'm coming back for a church without spot or blemish. So that means that the church won't always be dead. That means that the church has to be resurrected yes. into its wonderful form. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Free. But right now we're sick. Uh -huh. And we need Jesus. Uh -huh. So here's Martha and Mary. They say the only person that can save my brother is Jesus. The only person that can save the church today is Jesus. Yes. Uh, so that's why we got to get back to worshiping him, praying him, and adoring him. Uh -huh. That's why we need to reference him more and more today. Hallelujah. Verse 4 said, When Jesus heard that he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for my the God, glory God. of God, that the Son of God might be glorified yeah. thereby. Yeah. How many of you know that God is about to be glorified in this yeah. last hour yeah. and with this church, with this church, and in the body of Christ? Yeah. Oh, everybody is about to know that he is God. And it's not Muhammad, and it's not Buddha, and it's not confusion, but his name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the moon God. It's And everybody is about to know right now because the body of Christ is about to be empowered. We better come on now. Watch this. Amen. In verse 6 he said, when he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place yeah. where he was. Then after that he said unto his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews are late sought to stone thee and go is thou thither again. Don't you know that right now many stones are being thrown in the body of Christ? Because they see a lot of people falling by the wayside. But how many of you know that God got some true soldiers that's willing to stand? And they stand in their own mind, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. God got some more people that is ready to stand on the battlefield, ready to fight this good fight of faith. And now they stand right now in the world today that we don't have anointed because they're looking for the signs and the wonders. Yeah. But how many of you know that if you call yourself a Christian that signs and wonders should follow you? Uh, uh, you should not just be able to quote the word, uh, but the word of God should be manifested through you. Uh, uh, that's what the people are looking for. They're looking for a sign right now. Can they see a sign up inside of you? Uh, or do they gotta look past you to see a sign? Uh, but if you were a Christian, greater is he that is in you should rise up in you. And when they look at you, they shouldn't see you, but they should see him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 9, Jesus answered, uh, that, verse 8, his disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and go as thou thither again. Listen to what Jesus said, and he answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? 
If any man walk in the day, he stumble not because he seeth the light of the world. What Jesus was saying is that if you walk in him, that you would not stumble. You don't have to worry about who's trying to kill you and who's trying to come up against you. Who's putting the daggers in your back? You don't have to worry about it because you're walking with Jesus. The only time that you have to worry about something is when you're walking in yourself. I'm talking about that old filthy, nasty flesh. But when you walking in Jesus, you don't really have to worry about much. Many weapons might be formed, but none of them shall harm you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. They can form the weapon against the body of Christ, but no devil in hell is going to be able to overtake the body. Oh, I'm going to say this tonight, that my God is God, and he's about to restore his church, because the groom is soon to come to take up his bride. In verse 11 he said these things said he And after that he said unto them Our friend Lazarus sleepeth But I go that I may awake him out of his sleep The body of Christ have been sleeping And God is coming to awake us He's talking at some of us in the midnight hour He's talking at some of us while we on our jobs He's talking at some of us while we're driving in our cars Some of you restless can't sleep at night Verse 
15 he say I am glad for your sake that I was not there to in the intent you may believe nevertheless let us go unto him he say reason his disciples because he had one that was down in his name was Thomas he was down just a little bit because he didn't understand what Jesus was going to do he said you're going back to Jerusalem and they're ready to kill you every now and then you just got to do what God tells you to do When Lazarus came forth, 
with his grave garments. Yes. Jesus said, loose him. Yes. And once he was loose, yes. Lazarus was alive. Yes. The body of Christ is being revived. The body of Christ is being restored. Yes. Jesus is ready to make his make good on his promise. He said, I'm coming back for a church without spot or blemish. You can't be blemished and expect to go to heaven. You have to be clean. You have to be holy. You have to be righteous. You have to live this life. You have to live this life. It's time out for playing games. It's time out for pity packing. It's time out for acting like you got something. It's time to get somewhere and get in your garden. Go fast for 40 days. Get in power for real. Stop acting like you got the Holy Ghost. Stop thinking and thinking. Stop acting like you in power. And go somewhere and get in power. Because God is ready for some real people. Oh, 
that way. You can only get restored when you live righteous. You can only get restored when you sell out unto Christ the right way. You can only get restored is when you just let him have his way. Nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Thy kingdom come. Let his kingdom come inside of you. Let him do what he needs to do to make you royalty. You say that you are a royal priesthood, but your face is always looking tight. You ain't of my father. My father ain't looking ugly. He's looking good all the time. If you're going to represent Christ, I have a problem with Satan. If you're going to represent the God that I serve, you got to represent him the right way. If you are an ambassador of Christ, represent him to the fullest. Put on his garments of righteousness. Everything about you should read holy. When they look at you, what epistle are you? When they read you, what are they reading? When they see liar, thief, murderer, when they see no good, what are they singing? Or do they see righteous holiness? Oh, can I preach this thing, honey? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time out, church. God is tired of the mess in the church. The mess got to get out of the church in order for the church to be rebuilt and restored. It has to be done. God is looking for some preachers that's willing to go back to preaching true holiness and not compromise. Because they want money in the church. Not compromising. Not compromising. Because the person that's in the church is doing wrong and he pay all the money in the church. Tell that devil to sit down somewhere. Oh, that's, that, that's what God is looking for. If you're not living right, how can you get behind God's pulpit and teach anything or preach anything? Amen. You have to live right. You have to have something about God up inside of you. If your life is not lined up with the word of God, Bishop, you should let him mount your pulpit. Yeah. And if they get mad, tell them to get mad. Sit someone, sit yourself down and get saved for real. Get in power for real. That's what God is looking for. God, do he have some people that are willing to be corrected these days? No one wants to be corrected. Every time you correct somebody these days, they say you're hurting their feelings. And they're ready to leave the churches.
there was an impartation taking place. God bless her soul. Uh, uh, she's in heaven right now, uh, smiling down upon me uh, because she's seen uh, her prayers was not in vain. Uh, God answered her prayers. Uh, so every now and then you need someone. Uh, if a true friend, uh, if I'm a friend to you, uh, and if I see a lump in your jaw, uh, I'm not going to tell you everything is going to be okay with you. Uh, but I'm going to tell you that you got a lump right here. to tell you that your sin is not okay. But we want we want the things of God. We want the things of God. We want the anointing. But what are you willing to give up to get the anointing? What are you willing to sacrifice to get the anointing? Lazarus gave up his life to be resurrected again. Are you willing to give up your life to be resurrected again, to be in power with Christ? Woo! Yes, 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 hallelujah, glory, Jesus. Mm. Do you still got too many tombs in your way? Yes. Too many stones in your way? Yes. That you don't know how to get them out. Help us, oh God. Lazarus didn't move his own stones. Jesus had other men move his stones. That's why God got vessels. People that don't mind interceding. People that don't mind praying. People that don't mind sacrificing and laying to stand up with you. Laying up on their knees. On their face before the Lord. Crying out for you. To make it right. That you may get it right. People don't mind doing that these days. Because you still got some of those saints that have sold out unto God. And they don't care about the accolades. They're not chasing titles. They don't care about that. They don't care about the pat on the backs. All they care about is souls. And making sure that you make it in. That's what God is looking for. That's what the body of Christ is supposed to be. All that other stuff, uh, we just added all type of stuff into the body of Christ. Don't corrupt the holiness. Don't put things in that we want to put in. But I come to serve notice. Come to serve notice. As Josiah turned down all the idols up and all the gods and all the stumbling blocks, I come to tear it down tonight. I come to tell you that Christ is real. I come to tell you that He's it's okay to serve Him with your whole heart. He said, when you seek me with your whole heart, then you shall find Him. The problem is, is that you're not seeking with your whole heart. You're not willing to really sacrifice. Sacrifice takes something out of you. We're not willing to sacrifice anymore. We're in this right now generation Amen. that we just want to be in power and never go through the pain. And never go through the hurt. But how many of you know that you have to go through the pain? How many of you know that you have to go through the hurt? Everybody look at my anointing and they say, I desire to have that, but you ain't been what I've been. People look at you and you ain't been where you've been. And they want what you got, but they ain't paid the price to get what you got. So they want to hijack your anointing. But how many of you know that I serve notice on every imitating spirit? Every false and wicked spirit, I serve notice on you. You cannot have what God has given another. You are total original. All you have to do is get in his presence. He has no respect of a person. He don't mind restoring you. This revival is called restoration. And God wants to restore his body. But do God have some people that's really ready to commit and be open unto him? Ready to follow all of his commandments. Ready to really live for him. 
Do we have such a person in this room tonight? You've been coming to church for years and years. And you still haven't been empowered. And today you made up in your mind that you just want to.